Lisa and welcome to my garden. So today I want to talk to you guys about my fall planting plans. Um, right now I have quite a few things in the garden that are going strong, a lot of tomatoes, um, some cucumbers that I had to decide are you gonna pull them or are you gonna let them live out their life cycle until first frost well I decided to let them just go ahead and produce for as long as they can and pull them when they're done so our first frost here in zone 8a is November 15th so I'm just gonna let them do their thing that's a long time though to not have any fall crops planted so I'm going to interplant fall crops where I can and I think I'm going to also dedicate one of my beds just to kind of the remnants of summer, but I'll show you that in a minute. I'm also going to share with you how I kind of draw out my beds and plan out the um, plants that I want to put in the beds and show you what seeds that I am interested in growing this fall. So here we go. So the arch is full of loofah and cucumbers, as you can see. It is pretty packed and green and look like it's showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. So I'm gonna let this go, of course, until it fizzles out. The great thing about growing vertically is when you look down in the actual bed, it is not taking up any space at all. These are the leaf foot plants taking up very minimal space. So I could actually probably plant some things here like maybe some carrots. As far as these tomatoes, um, I'm going to go ahead and harvest the last of these. These suffered a bit throughout the season, so I'm ready to let them go. I'm thankful for what I got, but I'm ready to move on. Um, so I'll be pulling all of these tomatoes out so this will leave some good room for my fall planting. I want to get as much okra as I can. It's doing so well, um, and okra is great for soups and stews come fall, so I'm going to let these go for as long as they can. However, the corn, my little struggle with corn over here, as soon as I get, if I get one or two ears out of these little stalks, I'm gonna pull these. So this entire bed, I'll have uh, ready to plant my fall stuff. In my pepper bed over here, I'm going to probably pull all the cayennes and buena mulattas off and pull these plants. I'm the only one that really eats spicy food in the house so I don't need them to produce for the, the next couple months. I can just take what I can get and um, get, make space for some new plants. As far as the uh, poblano pepper, I might let this keep going. Um, I didn't get much out of this yet. It was kind of a late bloomer, so I might let leave this to get what I can, but that's plenty of space. Um, for the oblesque here, there is um, there are two new cucumber plants that I just put in here, so I'm going to let those do their thing. They won't last um, probably until the end of September, so after that I'll pull those and maybe put some peas to climb up this trellis. The bell peppers I'm going to let go. Um, for as long as they can because I use bell peppers often. This plant is doing well, the others not so much. Oh, a little, a little lizard friend. Hey. Oops, sorry about that. Um, these two plants are kind of stunted, I think, so I might just go ahead and pull them, and harvest what I can and pull them. This bed has um, some late tomatoes and cucumbers. So this is a bed I think I'm gonna dedicate to like the remnants of summer. Um, I'll just leave all this stuff here. I'm going to pull the brown cherries and quinoa in the back and plant two more cucumber, um, sorry, two more tomato plants. Yes, I know that might sound crazy, but I'm going to try and get two more uh, tomato plants to grow before first frost and let this kind of be my last of summer. Um, I also have an okra plant in this bed as well that's doing pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to let this one be, you know, my experiment. On this side of the bed, I already pulled up my huge zucchini plant. It was taking up so much space. Um, she just wasn't producing, so I had to go ahead and pull her up. So I have a lot of clear space now. Um, this is another pepper plant that just was another experiment late in the game. I'm just gonna pull that, harvest probably all of my basil, and I'll have this whole section to plant um, some good things in. So 
Oh, as well as pulling up these, this tomato plant. So this bed will be mostly emptied to grow my fall plants. This bed has um, green beans and whole peas. I'm gonna let them do their thing. I also have some long beans back here. I'm gonna let them do their thing. I'm gonna pull that ground cherry plant and um, just, just let these two beds kind of fizzle out on their own. So it looks like I'll have the center beds to focus on the uh, flowers. The flowers will fizzle out. I'll have that bed, sweet potato bed I'll be pulling up soon and the containers and the corn bed. So I have, let's see, one, two, three, and most of four and five, six beds to work with for my fall planting while I let those kind of um, run their course. And then other containers throughout the garden. So let me show you how I'm gonna plan that out. So this is the garden journal I'm using. You don't have to use something like this. I just picked this up from Target. Um, it has like little stickers. I'm a sucker for stationery, so. Um, it has some prompts about, you know, your gardening, um, calendar with um, specific like task lists, and then graph paper to map out your um, garden, what else, to-do lists, I'm utilizing some of that, notes, and just pages for notes. So. You don't have to use something like this. Also, excuse my nails, <laughs> I'm getting them done tomorrow. But what um, I found most useful in this is the graph paper. So if you want to plan out your garden and you don't you know, want to spend money on like special books or whatever, I would say just get a pack of graph paper and this is what I use to kind of map out my beds. So this is my fall garden. Um, it is not exact to how it's mapped out, but it is exact as far as how much spacing I have. So I, I used two boxes for every square foot and I just mapped out. So these are my two side beds. This is um, Pepper Alley. This is Watermelon, Pumpkin Watermelon Alley. These are my center beds. And these are the beds that are along the side of the fence. And so you just need to keep track of how many square feet you have, meaning how many beds you have and how many containers you have. And then I'll start mapping out. This is when I thought I would pull everything up and start with a blank canvas. Well, that is clearly <laughs> not what's going on. There's a lot of stuff still growing that I'll probably not move all at once, especially case in point, the loofah and cucumber that are on the trellis. But, um, you know, it still gives me an idea of what I would like to plant where. Um, my writing is small and <laughs> it's looking even worse on this camera, but this is just to give you a general idea of how I kind of plan out ahead of time. Even if you don't keep to it exactly, it's still a great starting off point is what I'm trying to say. So let's talk about what I am planning on planting, uh, starting with one of my favorite vegetables to eat and grow um, is kale. I'm really looking forward to growing kale this fall, going into winter, it's very frost hardy. So this is lacinato kale. Is it lacinato or lacinato? You know I never know how to pronounce anything. Anyway, that's the dinosaur kale, that, that dark green kind of strip kale, it's really good. Curly kale's very delicious and frost hardy and then this is one i have not tried yet but looking forward to it and thousand head kale it gets really really big as you can see so um that's what i have and then i plan on ordering a couple other varieties of kale i want to grow some red kale and there was another variety on baker creek seeds that i saw um but i'll post a picture next up uh, something else i'm really excited about growing this fall are collards um one of my goals is to grow enough collard greens and harvest them to serve Thanksgiving Day. Um, that would be such a sense of pride for me to serve my own collard greens for the big dinner to my family. So really, really excited about this. Um, so I have actually two different um, seed packets of Georgia collards. This is from Burpee and this is from um, Seed Mail Co. And then another type of green are Japanese mustard greens. 
and the Florida broadleaf mustard. Okay, I'm sorry. I just remembered as I was doing this video that I ordered a bunch of seeds um, and other things from the hood garden and I was gonna do an unboxing video so all the stuff was still in the box um, but I wanted to share since I'm talking about my fall garden I ordered some champion collard green seeds and old-timey blue collard green seeds I'm really excited about that so yeah I try to grow different varieties of things that I like to see what I like best to see their growing habits and just to have you know a variety so that's that for the greens Something else I absolutely love to grow. This I have I have been growing in the summer garden. To me, it's just so pest resistant. Now it will get some, you know, every now and then a caterpillar will get curious, but for the most part, you know, compared to, you know, the kales and the lettuces, the, they don't really bother the chard too much. And I never ate chard until I actually grew it. And I really enjoy it. To me, it has, um, a spinach taste maybe a little sharper bite than spinach but close enough and I saute it up with garlic I put it in my eggs I, I just really enjoy it so um, and it's beautiful at that so this is rainbow chard and from the hood garden I ordered some ruby red Swiss chard and there is another variety of chard that I'm gonna be ordering from Baker Creek seeds I believe it's like an orange color so I do love to incorporate color in the garden and since fall lends itself to a lot of mostly green things um i try to put in color anywhere i can radishes are another thing now i have more radishes than this i don't know where the rest of the packets are i have some icicle radishes and some french breakfast so i don't know where they are but they're in there somewhere but i'm just gonna show for this sake of this video we'll be growing some of these sparkler radishes and a couple other varieties next is my nemesis the carrot for all my accolades in my garden all the pretty things i've grown your girl cannot grow a carrot to save her life <laughs> i have not been able to grow carrots successfully but i will not be defeated by carrots so i'm going to try again multiple varieties and multiple places in the yard <laughs> containers the beds i'm going to try all different mediums until I get what I want. Um, so here, are, here's a kaleidoscope blend from Burpee. These are from Aldi, actually, some um, Danvers, half long carrots. And then this is another kaleidoscope rainbow mix, but look how clever. Um, these are so easy, easy to see seeds. And these are really great for someone who has um, any vision, vision impairment, or, you know, for kids, if, you know, it's easy for them. I just thought this was really, inclusive and helpful to anyone who has difficulty with the teeny tiny seeds and they had other they had other seeds that are coated like this and i did plant a couple and they grew the tops now i cannot guarantee you i know how to grow the bottom but the tops grew so i can tell you that the coating does not impede <laughs> the growth listen listen i'm gonna do it this year this this is my year this fall is my fall to grow carrots <laughs> A good follow-up to carrots since they kind of look like carrots but i'm gonna grow some parsnips as well next uh, are the bok choys i have um a baby bok choy variety here um let me mix this around some purple bok choy which i i was successful in growing both of these the cabbage worms tore this down to the ground child they took this out um, as soon as the warm weather hit so I didn't get to taste it but it was very pretty <laughs> um, and then tat soy which is I'm I'm really excited about this um, it's just so gorgeous and I've seen it in so many other gardeners um, pages on my feed so I'm excited to grow my own um, so yeah and then from the hood garden she gave me a freebie seed packet and it's red tetsoid mustard seed. So I don't know what this looks like. I'm gonna have to look this up, but I don't know if it looks like this or if it looks more like a mustard green, but either way, I'm really excited about that as well. Next up is cabbage. This is the only cabbage um, variety seeds that I have, but I do plan on getting a couple more. Um, and I'll probably grow my cabbages in containers. So I have this one and I think I saw a Baker Creek seed last night, another variety that I do wanna try. Um, and then kohlrabi, oh, this was so beautiful in everyone's garden this year that I saw on Instagram. So I will be trying to grow this myself. I thought I had both green and purple, but I guess not. Um, but either way, definitely the early purple. What's not pictured here um, that I plan on growing 
is cauliflower. Um, I did not. I do not have any cauliflower seeds, but I do want to grow some purple cauliflower and definitely some purple cabbage. Again, I like growing um, colorful vegetables, so I will be growing those as well. Anywhere that I have a trellis, I will be adding peas. Um, I have some sugar snap peas here. These are from the um, Dollar Tree. I have some little marble peas. This is Mr. Big Pea from Park Seed. These grow well. I have grown these before. These will be a first. And then um, from the Hood Garden, I also have Mammoth Melting Sugar Peas. Looking forward to that. So these are gonna go wherever I have a trellis in my garden right now. So Pumpkin Watermelon Alley will turn into a place for peas and runner beans and the trellis um, with the loofah and cucumbers. Once that finally dies down, I will be adding this stuff as well. We're in the home stretch, guys. <laughs> Next up is um, lettuces. So I will be growing lots of lettuce. I actually love growing lettuce, but it just does not do well in this heat during the summer. Um, it bolts almost immediately, so I didn't get to continue growing it. Um, but I'll be growing lettuce mostly in my green stock tower. But, you know, if there's places, little spots within the garden beds, I will plant them there as well. So I have um, arugula, which is not technically lettuce, but close enough. Some arugula, um, some red, some ruby red leaf lettuce this is my favorite. Some white Boston and some mixed lettuce. This grew so nice for me um, before the heat took it. Um, so that's that. What's not pictured here is spinach. I do plan on growing spinach as well. And I'm sure I have another variety of lettuce that I'll come across that I want to grow as well. Most of my herbs are still growing, going strong. Um, I did have some get taken down by the heat. So for those, I'll probably just replace them. I'll see if I can grab any pots of it, at any starts, if I can find. Um, but from seed, I always love to grow cilantro i posted on my instagram the other day that i just could not grow cilantro last year for the life of me the year before abundance i had an abundance of cilantro so i really want to get back to that it's one of my most used used herbs um so i'm going to grow some more i i realize in my trial and error that cilantro needs cooler temperatures so when it gets to the 90s and the 100 degrees here it just does not do well so now that's cooling down a bit I do have one pot that is doing okay but I know it, do, it will do even better um, in the 70s so I'm looking forward to growing this very shortly and last but not least I always want to incorporate some flowers um, the flowers I'll be growing from seed are these pansies look how gorgeous look at these black ones oh my goodness um, and I'll also be picking up mums, of course, and any other cool weather flower that I find will be added to the garden. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I will definitely be going more in depth with my summer planting. I will show you my seed starting process and take you along as they grow, or how I plant them out, all that good stuff um, to kind of document my fall planting journey. So if you enjoyed this, don't worry, there's more to come. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, see you then.